Hey everyone, Sean Tierney here from the Automation Blog and School, and this week on the Automation Show, we're going to see if we can get a S7 1500 PLC to read data out of a Control Logix, the one behind me. But before we get into that, I did want to tell you about my collection, my video collection. I've got five different uh, seasons on this USB drive. That's over 280 videos and 29 hours of how-to shows from uh, the last seven years, all on this USB drive for $35. And uh, if you want digital only, you can get it for $30. So you can go to the automationblog.com forward slash TAB1. This is collection number one. And uh, find out more about that. But, you know, when you uh, pick up something like this, you really help the channel. There's so much we want to do that uh, you know you can help us by just picking up one of these and putting it on yourself or getting the digital only edition now when you get it i do want to point out that you not only get a pdf on the usb drive that has every all 287 episodes and what they are but you also get a printed copy as well so let me put this under the uh, the overhead cam here and you can see all of the different shows we've had over the years um, hours over 29 hours so that's the way you can help this channel and help us grow and get to some things we really want to do so with that said let me put this over to the side here i'll just put that there for now and uh, what we're going to do now is go over to the computer and see if we can't write a program to get this to read from that so let's go ahead and do this now um the first place we want to go and we've kind of covered this in the past is uh, support.industry.siemens.com. We've covered that several times on the show. And what we're going to search for is CIP client. Okay. So I'm going to type that in there and search on that. Okay. You can see here application example, CIP client. So let me click on that. And then here, there's two things I'm going to grab. I'm going to grab the doc. So this is kind of like the instructions. So I'll open that in a new tab. And then I'm going to grab, I don't have V17. I'm running off V16. Now there is a project in the library. I'm just going to use the library file. So I can click on that and that'll download. I get a login. Um, I don't even know if that login still works, but uh, you, know, you can create a login. It usually takes them a little while to approve it, but uh, then you'll get access to that stuff. So in any case, um, and here you can see the manual. Um, there is one page in this manual you'll definitely want, so I have it printed out here on the workbench. But uh, let me minimize that for now and go over to VMware. Now let me show you in my L73, right, I have these three numbers here I want to get. Good scrap and total parts being made by PLCB. This is, uh, some of you may recognize this program from our uh, View SE course. That's a course I teach over at theautomationschool.com. And we have all these machines and we create all these uh, face plates and pop-ups and, you know, animations to uh, see what's happening in the plant. But really all I want here are these three numbers. I got a five, a two, and a seven. And these are the part names. We'll come back here. But let me toggle over to Siemens. Now, I've already created, if you haven't seen it yet, I think we're over 350,000 views. I go through creating your very first Siemens S7-1500 program. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. I'm not going to go through all that again because we've already covered it. So um, in any case, I have a blank program here. I've created a, uh, you know, you get the OB1 by default. I got a data block one just like I do on my S7 course. I'm using the uh, starter pack uh, PLC um, that we unboxed previously. So um, what we're going to do here is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unzip, or actually I've already unzipped it, um, and add in that uh, application that I downloaded, okay? And that's really like an instruction or an add-on instruction if you're an Alan Bradley guy, right? So let me uh, show you where I've unzipped it right here. So you can see it right there, LCCF, okay? And so now let me bring up the libraries here. And what I'm gonna do, you see right here, open global library, go to my desktop, and it's this one here, the library, and it is compressed. So let me grab that guy. And it's saying, I've already done this a couple of times, making sure it worked. 
So um, I'll just choose one of the existing folders. It'll just overwrite. And there it is. So what I want inside of here, if we look in here, right, I want the S7 1500 because that's what we have on the desk. I have done this with the 1200. It also works with the 1200. There are some version limitations, right? You can't use a really, really old version. This uh, utilizes some new features. But uh, you know what I want to do here? So let's see if I can drag and drop it on my first rung. See, it's bringing it into my project. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and let it create the uh, backing tag there. And here we are. Now, there's some things we're going to need to provide this instruction to get it to work, right? We're going to have to provide it like where in the world is the control logics on Ethernet? Is it what's its IP address and what tags do we want? So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll just do that over here in my data block one. And I actually made myself a nice little list here. So I wouldn't forget to create anything. All right. So the first thing I want to create is the IP address. So CLX underscore IP underscore AD. And uh, this data type will be an IPv4. Typo. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to fill in those stat values here because I happen to know, whoops, where my control logics is, I hope. I believe it's 157. Excellent. Okay, what's next here? Uh, the slot number. So I got to tell it the slot number. That'll be a, this actually has to be an unsigned int. And that'll be slot zero. If you look behind me, or behind me this side, you can see it's slot zero. What else did I need to have? All right, an enable bit. Could I have an enable bit? We want to be able to start and stop this thing. So I'm just going to call it com enable. And you probably guessed that will be a bool. All right, what else do we have here? Now for the tags, to tell this instruction how to grab the tags of the control logics, it's a little different um, than uh, what you would think, or at least what I thought. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an array, CLX underscore tags. And I'm going to make that an array, okay? So we're going to make that an array of... And I want to make it an array of the LC, LCCF um, tag definitions, not diagnostics, definitions. Okay, let's make this wider. Come on, baby. We don't need this guy anymore. Wider is better. Excellent. Okay, because there's two there. We don't want diagnostics. We want definitions. All right, so now we only made an array of 0 to 1. I need to make it an array of 0 to 2 because I need three of them. All right, so tag zero. Now we have to come in here and give it a name. What is the name of that tag? Well, let me come over here. We have good scrap in total. Let me just grab good, copy, come back to this VM, and we will come in here, tag zero. Good. And, you know, I'm just gonna put those in the other two and then I'll edit them. So the third one was total. Yeah, I think they're all caps. And probably move this over some too. Okay. This one's scrap. If you've taken any of my PLC courses, then you're probably familiar with these uh, these tags. We use these quite a bit. Um, in the courses. All right, so good scrap total. And something else I have to do. I have to tell it the tag type. Now, this is not very straightforward. Matter of fact, let me come over here and I'll show you this page. If you go to section 42 in that PDF, right, you'll see down there. I don't know how high I can get it here. Depending on what type of tag, mine are dense, of course, control logics. You always want to use dense when possible. So we need to make that 00C4. To be a dent. Okay. So zero zero C. Whoops, I think I put an O in there. Look, look what I did. C4. Okay. 
Okay, you know what? I'm just going to copy and paste and paste. Okay, so that should be pretty good there. Okay, let's see. Did I forget anything? No, I think I'm pretty good there. So now let's come back over here to our instruction. Let me put a normally open contact for you Alan Brelli guys. That would be an XIC. And let's go ahead and get this enable. And we're going to throw it there. Oh, we'll throw it there. <laughs> and then I will control drag it to the enable. So we'll enable the instruction and turn the enable on at the same time. And then interface. Well, this is what interface on the unit. Some of these, uh, some of these S7s uh, have so many different ports. You know, I think you're lucky if you have an Allen Bradley and you have one port these days, right? On your on your CPU or your controller. But uh, on these S7s, you can have like I think the smallest one has a two-port switch, and then you can have ones with five different Ethernet ports and Profi bus and all this other stuff. So um, you really got to tell it which interface it is. And this one, we're just going to do. Boop, 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 boop. Local Profibus and interface one. Okay. And then the server IP. Well, we just put that in here, right? So we'll throw that there. The slot, we get that in there. That's a zero. And then the tags. Okay. Let's drop the tags in. Excellent. Well, that should be all we have to do. Well, let's see if it works. I'm going to go ahead here and compile the whole thing. Make sure there's no problems. Looked good. I'm going to download. Um, I had that blank file already downloaded in here to wipe out the uh, training file that I've been using um, in the course. We re reinitialize because we didn't uh, disable that, so it'll have to reinitialize. There's really no tags in there, anyways. And now that we've downloaded, let's go ahead and monitor. And monitor. Okay, we'll open this guy up. Okay. Uh, there we go. So right now we have zero, zero, and zero for the value, okay? Coming in from those three tags. And over here, we've never enabled it, okay? So you can see. Valid false, busy false, error false, and this is the status. So at this point, I should be able to toggle this bit on, and it should read in. Now, one thing I didn't change, let's go ahead and change that, is I don't want to flood my network with too much information. So if I come in here, and I come down to, matter of fact, I think I can do it right here. Right? You see this update rate? It's 10 milliseconds. I'm going to do one second. Okay, and that's kind of like, so let me do an online download, an online runtime edit here. Get that back down into the CPU. All right, so it'll update every one second. All right, so let's go back to the data block. Okay, we are monitoring. Everything's good. We're monitoring here, live and in color. And now, let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this on and see if we get our data. Okay, you can see it. this is on, this is on. Okay, valid, true. Busy, true. Error, false. That's good, right? Sounds good so far. Let's see what we got here. Zero, zero, zero. Now, I don't think those values are actually zero in the controller, are they? Let's come over here. No, five, two, and seven. So let's come back here. It says it does not have an error, right? So why isn't it updating? Okay. Well, look, it eventually did update. Let's see. Maybe I was just wasn't patient enough. Let's go back to Control Logics. And this program isn't really doing anything right now because there's no factory talk view connected to it. I'll do six, three, and nine. Okay. Go back here. Six, three, and nine. So it seems like it just took a little while to get up and going, but now it does seem to be updating 
pretty quickly. You know, I can come over here and I'll just change this to five. I'll go back here. Five. I couldn't even get back soon enough for it before it updated. So I'd have to say that if you create your program like I just did, that this little library seems to work pretty good. You just have to be patient for that initial connection. You can see uh, I have to wait at least a good 30 seconds before I started seeing the values come in. So with that, I hope you found this helpful. And that's it for this show. Now, if you enjoyed it, please consider giving me a like and a thumbs up. And if you'd like to find out all about my S7 PLC training course, we go through all kinds of stuff, everything you would need to know to get started with the S7. Uh, you can find it over at theautomationschool.com. Um, you can also follow me or get in touch with me over at automation.locals.com. We've had a couple of viewers sign up recently. They bought me a cup of coffee and they get to ask me questions for 30 days. And uh, uh, this particular person was, uh, one of them was a, a Contrologics guy who's struggling with the Micrologic. So we've been going back and forth and uh, getting them up to speed on the micro. So with that, I just want to wish you all a happy, safe and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.